So you're finally growing up. You got a girlfriend finally, you got a dog, everything's working out, you got a job even, and now it's time to get a house. Ah, maybe time to rethink the house. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Josh, and one thing that you won't know about me if you're new here to the channel, and my name is Josh, is that I am actually a financial advisor, and I work with clients to help them achieve whatever financial goals on their plate, and unlike any other time in my life, everybody wants to buy a house. It's absolutely insane. I'm not really sure where this came from. I think maybe it's the fact that people have been thinking about this forever, and there's maybe like a large cohort of people who are coming into the workforce and actually have jobs now and are able to move out and made so much money on GameStop that they can afford to actually put a down payment on a house and the cryptocurrency markets are going pretty well and maybe they take some of that out and put that on a house. So all of a sudden there's money here and people are willing to move out and they are able to move out. But I have heard some insane stories, okay? I have heard some of the most nuts things I've ever heard. I mean, there was a house, a client that I had was bidding on and it was not even that expensive. We're talking like a $400,000, $500,000 house. This house, they put in a bid for like $60,000 above asking, didn't even get a sniff. It went for $110,000 over the asking price. That's insane. Like I, I remember historically, like if you were to be able to get a house for maybe plus or minus three or 4% of the list price, like, okay, that's within reason. We're talking plus or minus 30%. 25% of the house's list price. That is insane. And where I live in Canada, but it's this is very similar all across North America. Where I live in Canada, we have seen the aggregate number of house transactions go up 35% over the past year. That's crazy. The aggregate number of, of real estate transactions has gone up by a third, and the average home price has gone up by 13 or 14%. And we're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars here. 13 or 14% is no small deal on hundreds of thousands of dollars. And okay, so what is all happening here? Why is this actually happening? Well, I joke about, you know, AMC and, and GameStop and cryptocurrencies bringing all this new money into the market. But I mean, there is some truth to that, but I think the real reason why we're seeing this massive rush into the housing market and why there is so much demand is because millennials are finally entering the market. And it is actually very obvious. There was a beautiful study put out um, by, I believe it was the United States uh, Labor and Statistics that talked about mortgage origination. Where are most of these new mortgages coming from? And what they found is that the most expansive bands, you know, the bands of, of people, like the bands of, of demographics, you could say, that these new mortgages were coming from, were from the ages of 18 to 39. So what we're seeing is that all of these people who may have been kind of stuffed out of the job market in 2008 after the crisis are now entering in with money. And you know what? Unlike the early 2000s, which ended in a horrible housing catastrophe and a massive housing crisis, these new borrowers are actually very credit worthy. And this is good. This is overall quite a good thing that people are getting into the housing market, but it does do some pretty crazy things to the housing prices. And as we all know, if we've taken even the most basic of economic courses, supply and demand. If there's only so much supply and everybody wants a house, we're going to see prices rise. But there is another thing that is also a massive factor in this whole thing, which is mortgage interest rates. And if you go ask your parents, I imagine based on the demographics I see in my YouTube analytics that you're probably between the ages of 18 and 40, probably 18 and 30 even, what that means is your parents went through a time in their life where mortgage rates were like 20%. <laughs> Think about that. Think about going to try and get a mortgage and your interest rate is 20%. No, now today we're seeing mortgage rates under 2%. That's absolutely insane. And here's a crazy thought to think of, okay? From 1989 until 2021, we have seen the price of homes go up by about 240%. And of course that's a lot, but you know, if we think about inflation and how many years that really is, I mean, that's like 30 years, that's a long time. We've seen housing prices go up about 250%. But if we adjust for the interest rates that have come down so far that have pushed mortgage payments down so far and made them so affordable and after factoring in inflation and all these sorts of things houses are actually 30 percent cheaper to finance when it comes down to the interest rates and the payments it's actually much easier to buy a house even though they are 240 percent more expensive and that's really fascinating we have all these factors coming together it's 
now in 2020, the number one most populous cohort of people is people aged 25 to 29. We're seeing those prime home buying years start to really flood the market. And that's crazy. And lastly, I think people have just been saving so much money with COVID. You find out that you're really not spending as much. And so many of you guys have been bombasting me about my Starbucks cup. And how am I gonna take financial advice from some guy who spends four or five dollars on a coffee? And you know what, it's true. I actually probably reload a $25 Starbucks card every single week in my app. But you may have noticed that I've made a change in my life and I listened to your demands and I actually found one of the greatest local coffee producers that has actually been so kind and generous to reach out and say, hey, you should probably think about upgrading your coffee because you're just drinking this Starbucks crap. Why don't you go with something like Railway Roasters? And it's actually incredible. I think it's got this history of this guy I know. He's actually a very great guy and his family comes from a history of like railway workers, these hard working honest guys. And they came up with Railway Roasters and this coffee is actually unbelievable. I, you know, when I'm grinding on those late nights working so hard as a financial advisor, I make sure I pour myself a nice tall glass of Railway Roasters coffee. I'm actually drinking some right now. And this is gonna allow me to save so much money that I might be able to buy a house. But anyways, guys, I just wanted to take a second to thank our very first sponsor, which was Railway Roasters, who took a leap to come and sponsor this insane guy. So I'll leave the link in the description below. Go get yourself a bag of coffee. It'll save you a ton of money and maybe you'll actually have more money left for that down payment. But anyways, back to this discussion on housing. I think that there's a few things we might wanna be considering if this is the year you wanna buy a house. And I know it's so exciting, you're so involved in this, process of wanting to buy and you're getting emotional, you're going and putting offers on places and you're seeing properties. But I think one of the things that's really important to understand is that interest rates might not always be this low, okay? And okay, that, that's a pretty hot take because a lot of people are thinking, well, interest rates might be this low forever. But here's the thing, this isn't a gamble that you wanna take lightly because as a young person, when you are starting to accumulate financial assets, whether it's a house or stock market investments or wealth producing vehicles of whatever sort, when you're young, the lion's share, the biggest piece of your wealth is going to be your home equity. That's just how it's gonna start. And then as you grow older and start contributing more to other investments, what have you, you're gonna to get to the point where your investments in the market or your investments in a business or your investments in other real estate are going to way outpace your home. But there is a certain type of morale and financial security, some peace of mind that comes from having home equity. And what I mean by this is, for my situation, I think about, hey, you know, if I see something really stupid on YouTube and get canceled and all my clients leave me and I'm left in the dust with zero dollars to my name, at least I have positive home equity. I can sell my house and maybe live off of that for seven months while I learn how to day trade crypto. All that being said, I think that having positive equity in your house is really important. Now, what you don't want on the reverse end of that is negative home equity. And we saw this in 2008, when a lot of people started to buy houses at inflated prices right before the market corrected. And I'm not predicting some market crash. All I'm saying is it's a big decision and it might pay to be patient. You know, in economics, what we have is a situation where, okay, there's not enough supply for the amount of demand and supply needs to catch up. <laughs> supply doesn't come overnight. We can't just like 3D print a house overnight. Home builders have to come and, and respond to that demand by purchasing land, putting up houses, you know, buying new condo buildings, uh, buying new condo buildings, constructing new condo buildings and doing all these sorts of things to make sure that the supply is met. So right now we have this massive glut of demand and we don't have enough supply. What we need to do is potentially wait for supply to catch up and for this raging hot market to maybe simmer down before we make that decision on buying that very first house. So patience is a virtue and you're going to be rewarded for not overpaying for a house. And this is the thing I say all the time. I find it hilarious. People kind of like penny pinch on coffee and they penny pinch on avocado toast and they go and pay $60,000 over asking for a house. And it's like you just erased all that penny pinch you did for the last five or 10 years. So anyways, guys, if you got any value out of this video whatsoever, I hope you learned something about the housing dynamics and maybe took a step back and decided, okay, maybe I should be a little more patient on this whole decision because it is a big one. If you were one of those people or you got any value out of this video whatsoever, make sure to hit that like button below and support the channel. Hit subscribe as well and turn on post notifications for more videos just like this one every single week. Until next time.